Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome in the kitchen with Tally Faye. I hope everybody's having them a good day today. It's been a beautiful day so far here in all of Texas. I seen some weather alerts running across the TV, but it wasn't showing Grimes County on it, not yet anyway. So it's still pretty out there. It's hot and muggy, but it's pretty, right? We're blessed. No. Any old who, we're doing good today. I am uh, told y'all that I was gonna show y'all how I do my chow chow. And since so much of Buzz's garden stuff has come in, uh, we're gonna start working on that. Because what I have to do first, y'all, and so this is, today is Thursday. Yeah, today's Thursday. So I have to grind my vegetables up and let them soak in salt overnight. And so tomorrow we will finish the process of our chow chow. But I wanted to show y'all how I do this and I'm gonna do half a recipe this evening, this morning, afternoon, whatever it is. What is it? Oh, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, I'm gonna do half a recipe and we'll see how many pints that gives me. It should give me about four or five pints, something like that, round, roundabouts. Uh, but that's all I need for me. Buzz didn't really eat chow chow. So, cause this one has the, the brine on mine y'all is basically like what a bread and butter pickle brine tastes like. So that gives you an idea right away. If you, you know, are interested in my chow chow recipe and I love it y'all. I have loved chow chow since I was a kid. This is how my mama made it and I can just eat it out of the jar, but I love it so much. My favorite thing is with it on peas. On oh, purple hull peas. Oh my goodness, black eyed peas. Like that. I love it. And I like it with my pinto beans and such, but I like it with my peas. That's my favorite, favorite thing to eat it with. But uh, it's good on like uh, hot dogs and stuff. You can use it like a relish like that. It's real good like that. It's good in a deviled eggs and things, you know. So, I mean, it's very, very handy. It's chow-chow, y'all. And uh, it come about with people that at the end of the garden time is when you put up your chow-chow because that's whatever was left in the garden. And so, chow-chow can have anything, any of your vegetables in it that you prefer, you know, that you choose. Mama put everything in there. Hers was full of everything, and it was delicious. But, of course, this isn't the end of our garden season. So, uh, I, what it is, is I have to do it because I want the green tomatoes, y'all. And, oh, this just kills Buzz right here. This is a waste of a good tomato, y'all, for him to have to go out there and get me some of his green tomatoes. Because <laughs> we getting we waiting on them boogers to turn red. We got a big bowl of them over here. We're going to be having some BLTs soon, soon, okay? But right now, I need some green tomatoes for this. And you want them green. You don't want them. Let me see if you can see that. You see how this one's getting that little orangey spot on it right there? You don't want them. No, don't get them past that. You want them green, okay? All right? That's what you're going to do. So I've got, <clears throat> I'll show y'all down here. I've got green tomatoes, cabbage, onion, uh, red, green, and purple bell peppers and now this y'all i do this and you do not have to put this in there if you don't want to but this is a couple of jalapenos that i took and see and i'm even leaving the seeds in them on them some of them not completely but i like to leave a little bit of the seed in there to give it a little bit of bite but you don't have to put the jalapeno in there at all if you don't want to i just like it in there because i like mine kind of spicy like but what i need to do is grind up these vegetables and I have my old trusty grinder here y'all this thing is old 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 and I don't know what I'm gonna do when it finally burns up so I baby it along y'all it has the perfect blade in here for doing my uh, chow chow and for doing my egg rolls and uh, I had bought a number of food processors and stuff in through the years and none of them have the blade with the perfect cut like this one does. So I try to be easy with it. This thing is so old, but it just, it, it keeps on going, y'all. I just baby it along. 
So, first thing we're gonna do is just, we need two cups. I need two cups of the uh, onions, okay? Like I say, I'm cutting this recipe in half, y'all. So it's easy enough if you wanna make a double recipe. But I'm just gonna take it, cut me up some chunks here. That'll fit down in my little chopper and just go to grind it. not have to be exact at all y'all this just gives you a, a you know a little something to follow on it kind of like so I got me a tub here that I'm just gonna take and I got close enough to two cups of and it was two of Buzz's nice beautiful onions there okay so I'm gonna dump them in there the next thing I want to do is I need me um, two cups of my is it two cups of my green tomatoes? Yep, I need two cups of my green tomatoes here. You just take them. I do cut the little belly buttons off of them. This will be a nice uh, chicken scrap bucket for the chickens. They'll like all these different pieces of stuff. I'm just going to take it do the same thing until I get me two cups of my uh, green tomatoes. That's gonna work. Close enough to two cups. Going in my tub. All right. Next thing, I need me um, two cups of my cabbage. So I'm gonna take it. Got me a head of cabbage here. Same thing, repeat. work y'all couple cups okay now the one thing that I would like to be careful with is my bell peppers y'all because I have got too many of them in there before and they and it makes the whole uh, relish thing taste like bell pepper so I don't want to overdo it but I mean you still got to have plenty in there right Right, because like this recipe, I'm supposed to have, uh, what's it say on there? I need six green peppers and three sweet red peppers. Well, you know, that's probably more than I want. So what I've done is, now Buzz didn't grow the big red one here. I got that cut off. I got that from the store. But these are ones that I've cut up some the, you, what you do is you get your ones that didn't do so well or whatever in the garden, and I just cut them, cleaned them up. See, there's just purple ones. So, 
And then some of the green ones that had some spots on them, you just clean them up and you've got your good part left. They're perfect for grinding, right? So I need, you know, I'm going to just cut these up and kind of play this by ear a little bit. I'll show y'all what I'm going to do in a minute. I'm going to take them and uh, put them in there and we're going to stir it around and kind of eyeball it, right? Give it an eyeball, see what we think of that. But I'm going to go ahead and look, whatever's left here. It ain't like I ain't gonna cook with these, right? So I ain't wasting a thing at all. Get these cut up and get them ground up and we're gonna stir them up in there. But there's that. And I got me one piece of this big red one because, oh, they look so pretty in there, the red ones do, y'all. They really make it look pretty. Okay, I'm gonna go to grinding on these. color there see what I'm saying so now before I add my jalapenos which is the last ones last vegetable I'm gonna add in there we're gonna take this over here we ought to see and get my tub oh lordy it's got my cabbage my green tomatoes and my onions in it right so we're just gonna take it I'm pretty positive that I'm gonna use every bit of that and that's the equivalent of about four uh bell peppers that i you know different colors but still four bell peppers that i chopped up in there if that you know if you're wanting some kind of idea of a measurement on it right so we're just gonna stir it up and see what it looks like y'all i love the smell of it when i start stirring it all up the fresh Oh, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put every bit of this in there. I can tell it just by looking at it. So there was four, roundabouts four, nice bell peppers in there, okay? Just different colors of them. Stir it around here. Now, let me show y'all up close. Think about how pretty it's going to look in the jars after it pickles up like. It'll be dark, but look. See that? Okay. So now what I need is my kosher salt. And I'm going to take me a half a cup of my kosher salt here, y'all. Do me a half a cup. I mean a quarter cup. Did I say half? I'm in a quarter for this, uh, for half a recipe here, which is what I'm doing, right? So I'm gonna take me this quarter cup of salt, uh, kosher salt. We're gonna just stir it all in there now. Toss that around. And it's gotta sit in this overnight tonight now. And in the morning we'll drain it and rinse it. And we'll squeeze it out good and rinse it. You got to get that, all that salt out of there that's going to be soaking in it overnight. This is going to be the perfect little size batch, what I need, y'all. If I want some more, I can make me some more. Oh, the freshness is just amazing. Amazing. See, look what it looks like. All right, I'm going to take my jalapenos now real quick. throw them in there. Do I want that whole... Woo, buddy, I bet it's going to be hot, but I'm going to love it. I'm going for it. Oh, if I can get it. Oh, my button, y'all. Let me work on it.
There's my jalapeno. Just like that, y'all. And we're going to stir it up. I'm going to put my lid on it. And set it over here. And just let it soak in this salt overnight. And that's going to make it be good and crispy and stuff when I get ready to... cook it up. Oh my goodness, those jalapenos are nailing me, y'all. But there's the first round of it right there. That's what you do. Okay? Put the lid on it and I'm gonna let it set overnight. It's the beginning of our chow chow, y'all. Well, good morning, my cyberspace family. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Are y'all having a blessed morning? I am. It is just a blessed morning. It's so, feels so good out there, y'all, and everything. We had all that old bad weather and stuff, and, and we done had one rainstorm this morning uh, again, and I think we got another one rolling in here this afternoon and stuff, so guess what that did? That shut Tally Faye down from doing my mowing, and oh my goodness, y'all done already know me enough that it's driving me crazy when I look out there, and my yard is past being what I call fuzzy. I don't want it to even get fuzzy. It's it's growing, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, I can't do nothing about it. So, I'm just going to leave it. And, and I just will not fuss about the rain, y'all. I just, I won't fuss about it. I'm telling you, the day will come that it will stop raining here in Texas and everybody will just be crying for some rain. It'll come. You watch and see. So, I am happy, and I am just, I'm just blessed. I hope y'all are too, okay? Uh, we got to finish up this chow chow video, y'all. All right, I did that last night uh, and showed y'all how I chopped it all up and put the salt on it and let it set. Now, it is time. All right, I've got it in my jug. Oh, and by the way, I realized I didn't tell y'all, you just leave it sitting out on the counter. You don't put it in the refrigerator. You just leave it sitting out on the counter, okay? If I didn't say that, and I don't think I did, uh, don't worry about putting it in the refrigerator. It's fine sitting out, okay? It's got that salt going on it and doing its thing. So, here we are. Let me take that. Um, Y'all, look, I got on my In the Kitchen with Tally Faye t-shirt. Y'all, I know I mentioned about my t-shirts. Um, we, you know, we had all these storms and stuff and everything. Well, that slowed everything up for these people that are working on making my shirts for me. Uh, the shirt deliveries and I, I don't know what all, everything just messed it up for them as far as getting it done. So it's looking like it won't be until about mid-July until I can get my shirts in. But, you know, and y'all know I'm not a patient girl. But hey, I, I gotta. Have, I might as well be. Ain't nothing we can do about it, right? They'll come out when they come out, and then we'll be excited. I'll be excited, and I hope y'all will still want one by then. So, y'all don't give up on it. Y'all stay with me on it, and pray we get them, get them here soon. You know, sooner than later. So I want my t-shirts. It's gonna be fun. I can't wait to see what design and all that this guy comes up with for me on them, right and stuff. But this one here is just as cute as a bug. That's cute, isn't it? I thought it was. And, of course, it's in green. My favorite color. <laughs> so, anyway. All right, I'll hush about that. Get on with this uh, chow chow. All right. It set overnight with the salt on it. All right. What we have got to do, and this is very important for you to rinse this. So, I'm going to just turn. I'm not going to take y'all all the way over there by the sink. Let me see if I can do this. I'm going to show y'all how I'm doing this, okay? I've got my tub. All I'm going to do is get my my uh, colander here, set it in the sink, and I'm going to pour my chow chow in the colander, okay? Just like that. Whoop on it a little bit. <laughs> okay. I've got it in there. 
And now I'm just going to turn my cold water on and rinse it, y'all. Rinse it. Get my hands down in there a minute and squeeze it too. But you got to get that salt off of it. Because it's already absorbed into it. So, you know. If you don't rinse it, if you skip this step, you will be so sorry. Alright, see, I'm going to just take my hands and do it like this. Pick it up and let it rinse on it, right? Okay. Rinse it off good. Oh, it smells so fresh, y'all, and it's so pretty. I always think Chow Chow's pretty in the jars. Okay. Here we go. Now, let me squeeze it out. And just take it and just squeeze it like this, right? Get all that liquid out of it. Y'all, I was thinking that combination of vegetables that I cut up last night, that combination of vegetables just cut up just fresh like that would be so good on like uh, fish tacos with malt vinegar shook on it and stuff. Just using just that combination of vegetables like a, like a fresh relish thing. Would that not be good on fish tacos? I don't know. I don't know what else. You could do it on, put it on anything. It'd be good, just ground up, just like that. But anyway, me and my girlfriend were talking about that. And he's like, oh my goodness, how good that would be. Okay. About got it squeezed out all I can squeeze, y'all. Squeeze right. Let me get a plate for under it. I'll get it back over here. Where's my towel? Okay. Now, let's get get back here there we go I'll put it right there all right now you get my pot y'all over here I have my pot with my jars and water in it and I'll get closer over here by the stove and show it to you but I've got my jars submerged in the water for water bathing them and that's going to sterilize my jars because that water's been boiling on them and I'll tell you a little bit about that. This is a process, y'all. So if this video is too long, then I don't know what to tell you. So don't be, people be coming on going, it's too long, you know, so I don't know what to tell you. Ain't nothing worth a darn comes easy. So that's always been my motto. Okay. Dump your ground vegetables in there. Okay. Now we're going to add our goodies to it. Let me get my little recipe thing over here so I can make sure. All right. We got all that. Okay. Now I need, first off, I need three cups of sugar. Three cups of sugar going in. One, two, and three. Okay, there's our three cups of sugar. Now we need one tablespoon of mustard seed. 
mustard seed, okay? I thought I had everything out, y'all. Okay, I need one, double check, one tablespoon of mustard seed. Don't be scared of it. Y'all don't be scared. You can do this. And oh my goodness, you will be so proud of yourself and giving this to people like at Christmas time and stuff is so fun. Okay, now we need celery, celery seed, mustard seed and celery seed, okay? So on the celery seed, I need half a tablespoon. So I'm gonna eyeball that. Again, I tell y'all this isn't a science, but it gives you a general idea of, you know, what to put in there. There we go. Celery seed. Half a tablespoon for this size recipe. It's going to make the perfect little size recipe for me. I usually make this double, y'all. But anyway. Alright, it needs, it calls for one and a half. I, so I need three quarters of a teaspoon of turmeric. And see, this is where it brings it into the uh, bread and butter pickle thing going on. That's what's in there that makes it be the bread and butter thing, y'all. So, you know, if you don't, hmm, I was going to say, if you don't like bread and butter, you may not, you could leave this out. Seriously, you could leave this out. But, hey, that ain't, that ain't what I'm doing here. All right, teaspoons. So I need three quarters of a teaspoon of it. See, this stuff is pungent, y'all. Pungent. I want to be careful with it. Now, see, this word. <laughs> okay, so I'm a little scared of it. I don't want it to. Three quarters of a teaspoon. What do we think there, y'all? I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it right there. Don't be scared. <laughs> All right, there's our turmeric. All right, now we need cider vin apple cider vinegar. I need two cups of it. Two cups of my vinegar. I'm gonna pour it right here so I can see. All right, two cups of apple cider vinegar. Oh, that's the other thing that makes it be um, bread and butter, too, is that you're using a, the cider vinegar. So, if you don't want that, use regular vinegar, okay? White vinegar in it. White, no, uh, white vinegar and no turmeric. Just say it. Okay, now I need one cup of water. One cup of water. And guess what, y'all? That's it. So now, we're going to take this, stir it up, get it over there on the stove. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I am getting excited. Okay, let's get over by the stove, y'all. Let me turn this off. I'll be back. All right, so I've got it over here on the stove now. And we're just going to stir it around. And we're waiting for it to come to a boil, y'all. Because all our stuff is... Look at that. Ooh, that juice is so good in there, y'all. I could eat it right now. But we're going to let it come up to a boil. And we're going to let it simmer for three minutes when it does start that. Now, over here, I have my lids, my caps, and my rings in a little pot of water that I've heated on the stove so I can sterilize them. And now I'm gonna show y'all, this is how I sterilize my jars in this big pot right here. I've got them, they've been sitting there boiling in that and I'm gonna just pick them up out of there and take them and uh, dump the water out of them. Because we don't water bath this, we just seal this in the jars as soon as we take it up. Now y'all, there is all kinds of controversies about water bath uh, and not, and, and, uh, pressure, 
cooking it and all this and that and everything. But on these ones that we pickle, on these ones that we pickle, uh, I'm, you know, we don't, we don't water bath them. If it's pickled, if it's got that vinegar brine in it and you put that hot vinegar brine over it and your jars are sterilized and everything's boiling hot when it goes in that jar and you put that lid on it, they'll seal up like that and that keeps it crunchy because if you go, if you water bath them, it's going to cook it more in the jar and make your pickles or your chow chow or things like that that you're pickling make them squishy like your okra pickled okra we'll be doing pickled okra and stuff but i don't want to get in trouble for telling people not to water bath or to water bath or to uh pressure cook or anything i'm not going i'm not going to get in my water is boiling on my little lids i'm turning it off okay you don't want to keep boiling them because it'll warp your lid so now my fire's off, and it just they're just sitting there in the hot water. But I don't want to, I, I, you know, I don't want to get into that, and I don't want people coming on here telling me all about it and stuff. I know about it, uh, okay? I understand about it and this and that, but I'm just telling you how I do it and that, you know, you, you do it how you want. You know, you don't have to do it the Tally Fay way as far as, uh, whether you water bath them or not and that kind of thing, but this is pickling and this is how we do our pickling. Okay uh, Like I say just uh, You have to make your mind up on that how you what you prefer on that You know and what your idea is of that and that's fine whatever your idea is of, of you know To do that or not, but we just you know when it comes to pickling and we've been doing it all our life on that We don't we don't we don't water bath them and stuff. We just make sure everything's good and hot and sterilized and ready. And you, you know, put it in there, put that hot brine on it, and then you're good to go. And when you open that jar up, they're going to be crunchy. And that's what we're searching for. I hate a squishy pickle. And if you water bath them, that's what you're going to get. Just saying, y'all. Anyway, okay, there's my take on water bathing. You know, take it for what you want. All right, here we go. We are, it's starting to, it's starting to boil, y'all. And so we want it to sit here. I want to bring it up to a boil, though. <clears throat> it's just starting to get hot enough. Mm -mm -mm, it's going to be so pretty in them jars. I'm gonna let it sit there till it starts boiling. Let's give it a minute. Okay, it's boiling now. We're gonna let it boil for about three minutes. Give it a few minutes there and let it boil. Just stir it around easy because it's got all that syrupy sugar in there. And stir it around a little bit because it'll, you don't want it to scorch or anything. I've never had it do that, but. I just kind of stir it gently around, just kind of stand here and watch it. And like I say, let it let it boil for about three minutes, tops, once it starts boiling. But you want to let it start boiling. There it is. All right, there it is. I'm turning my fire off now. Let it sit there and simmer for about three minutes. That part's done. Now I want to get my jars out that I've had. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the turn that off. But see, I've had them. They're full. Oh, you can't even see. They're full of water. They are full of water, and the pot's full of water ahead, uh, on top of them. That's what I've been doing. I'm gonna take this over here and dump it out in the sink. You gotta be careful when you're doing that because that hot water will get on you. Because you gotta tip it up and pour it out. Just pour it out slowly. Because you gotta have these little tongs to do this with. You'll find these little tongs in the canning section when you go over there to get your jars.
I always like pouring that hot boiling water down my sink. I feel like it cleans the drain. Helps clean the drain out. Okay, we'll see. Now, I may have to have another jar, but if I do, I'll just get me another one and put it in here and sterilize it. But first things first, what do I do with my little rag? Well, I'll just get me another one, y'all. Oh, there it is. What I have is a dry rag to hold my jars with and a damp rag for me to be able to screw my tops on. And you'll see how I go about that, what I'm talking about. So, here's the part where I try to keep it from being messy, y'all. But y'all know how I am, right? I'm going to take it and stir it around so you get lots of you want to make sure you get your liquid your liquid in there right you want the syrup in it too you want your chow chow and your syrup in there can y'all see let me let me turn it a little more like that there we go see now i want, I want me some more liquid in there from what i'm looking at there we go You want that syrup in there. You don't want it to be dry. And you're going to take it and you're going to fill it to this first little line on your jar. You need that head space right there uh, for it to seal good, have the air in there. Things. And see, look, now I'm going to go ahead and just finish it off with the liquid. There we go. All right. On to the next one. And these jars are some kind of hot. You have to be careful with your temperatures because your glass will crack. If you change that temperature real quick, that glass can't handle it. So you just have to be kind of gentle with it, like. Y'all know I'm not gentle, so I, I practice really hard on doing that when I'm doing my canning. I slowed myself down, y'all. Slowed my roll, right? And y'all, this is uh, something that you don't have to wait on. You know, have, you know how you have to wait on pickles like six weeks or so or something? You don't have to wait on chow chow. It's ready. It is ready. All right, let me put a little juice in there now. A little syrup. Here we go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, I'm going to finish filling them up, y'all. All right, I'm down to my last little jar over here. So I'm going to take my pot. See, I've got... That's what I've got left in there, y'all. I don't think y'all can... Anyway, I'm going to take it. See if I can... Pour it in here like this. There we go. Y'all, that made exactly four pints for me. I mean, exactly. How awesome is that? And that is beautiful in there. Okay, time to put our lids on now. Now I'm gonna use my dry rag to hold my jar. What did I do with my little fork? I gotta get my lids out here. Get me a couple lids out. Okay, let me do that first. All right. Reach over here. See, and I hold the bottom of it like that. And because you've got syrup on it, take your rag, your damp rag, 
and wipe the rim of it a little bit. Like that, okay? Put your cap on, just like that. And put your ring on and tighten it down. You don't have to tighten it with all your might, but just make sure it's good and tight. Look at that, y'all. How beautiful is that? Okay? All right, here I go. I'm gonna pick it up, hold it in the palm of my hand, wipe my rim off with my damp rag. Get that syrup off of there. Put my cap on it. Get me a ring. A band, whatever. Everybody's got different names for them. Put it on there. And there it is. Alright, let me get the other two. Alright, so I got the got the last one done. But y'all look at it up close. Look. How beautiful it is in there. I'm going to leave them sitting here. And I don't know if y'all ever heard people talk about it. But the people that can. There's one of the most beautiful sounds in the world. Is the ping of the lid. So you're waiting on that lid to seal. And when it does it's going to suck down. And you'll hear it ping. You'll hear that metal ping. And that's music to a canner's ears. Right there. Okay. Now you can take this if you want. And do it in half pints. And that is so fun, y'all, to give as gifts. Get you the little, you know how you put, the, you see them like at the little flea markets where they got the little material cap tops on them. You, you can put, you know, that on them. You can tie, you know, uh, little strings around them and stuff and make bows. I mean, they're just so fun to give as gifts. And you can do half pints like this recipe would make eight half pints, right? You know? So, y'all, I want y'all to try this. I want y'all to try this. And even even the, the most uh, unseasoned canner can do this recipe, y'all. That's how easy this chow chow is. I mean, it's easy. It really is. It's, you know, a little bit of work. And on top of it, you can get these vegetables. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to grow a garden to make this. I mean, the vegetables that I've used in it, you know, you can get every one of these easily. Other than the green tomatoes. Trying to find green tomatoes might not be very easy. Um, you know, if you had to, you could use the tomatillos. Absolutely. You could use the tomatillos. Right? I mean, they work, they work just fine. They have the same consistency and everything you know so just keep that in mind if you can't get green tomatoes you can you can get tomatillos to make that substitution for that but anyway this is tally face chow chow y'all i hope y'all enjoyed the video and y'all think it's as pretty as i do of course you know me it's the little things in life but I'm going to put those, just let those sit there. You don't bother them. Leave them alone. Don't walk over there and fill your lids. They'll ping. And when you do, you'll be like, oh, yay, you know. <laughs> so, there's my chow chow recipe, y'all. If y'all want to try it, you can. So, it's since it's a rainy day, I'm going to be in this kitchen doing some recipes, y'all. So, oh, 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 oh. Buzz wants BLTs tonight. Our first round of tomatoes came in. And I've got them in the windowsill finishing up turning red. They're red. But I told him, I said, you're rushing them. He's like, no, look, this one's good. This one's good enough red. That ain't that no work. That ain't no work. Oh, he cannot wait for us to have our BLTs. So, you know, we're going to have them tonight. Whether the, the, the tomatoes are dark red or not, they're red. They just ain't dark red as I want them to be. But, you know, hey, they'll still be delicious with them homegrown tomatoes, y'all. Right? So, we haven't BLTs tonight, so I don't reckon I'll video that. I don't know. Who videos a BLT sandwich? <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all have a great day, a blessed day, and uh, take care of each other. Y'all be safe if you got weather going on or whatever and stuff. And uh, y'all just stay blessed, and I'll see you next time in the kitchen with Tally Faye.